Okay, so now what I want to do is actually uh, give the window background uh, a darker brush so that our bo game board stands out in a different color. So let's see how we can do that. Close the app, go back to the code. And I think if we go all the way to the top here, look for the window class for this app. Normally, I think the background, as you can see here, it's uh, using a brush of color window plus one, which is what we see as uh, currently as the white background. So let's comment this out, make a copy, and then let's use a get stock object API, which allows us to get a dark. There's a, already a dark brush, or is it? Uh, gray brush i forgot the name gray okay let's make sure that we get the brush right gray see here it's a gray brush okay this one so now again control f5 to build and run oops it's oops sorry there's a typo here I forgot an additional square bracket. Actually, I don't need this. I can just take this out from here. Okay, so this should work fine. Compile and run. All right, so now as you can see, the window itself has a is using a darker gray brush background. I like this more. That way we have, we can, you know, the user can focus on the game board instead of the background of, of the window. Okay, cool. So next, let's see how we can actually uh, start drawing some lines here so that we can have a three by three matrix to split this game board into a nine cell grid. So let's see how we do that. Uh, let's go back to where we actually draw the rectangle that's inside the WM paint message. Okay, here. Before I actually do that, how about we turn this code here into a function because I think we can use this in multiple places. So basically this will give us always the game board dimensions. So how about if we just copy this code, let's do that and here come here and just say get game board rectangle given a window handle and a pointer to a rectangle, rectangle pointer p rect. And of course this should return a boolean because it might succeed or fail. So now we are adding this function. This would be useful, we, I think we might use it in multiple places. So let's just say copy paste the code here. So, and this is where we have to make sure that I use a different naming here, okay. So just the same code, right? This gives, given a window, we can get its client rect. If that succeeds, then we will be able to actually, and we're still using the same global cell size. So the one thing here that I would change is that actually, instead of defining this, we can say B rect left, because we want to return this to the caller, pointer to rectangle top, right and bottom. This will actually give us our rectangle this looks good and this is in the case of success we return true in the case of failure we couldn't get the client rect for some reason then we can say set rect empty on the p rect because the user gave us some rectangle we should just set it to empty in case of failure and return false here so now we have this useful function that we can call Let's copy the name, go down. Oops, oh, sorry, I forgot. There's some red squiggly here. I forgot to continue adding this here. All right, because we took out that the local variables. Okay, now this is much better. So let's take the function header, go down to Delium Paint. Okay, so now that we have that function, let's see how we can use it here and minimize, uh, reduce the code we have here. So first, I'm going to paste the prototype here. As you can see, it's pretty much the same as get client rect, except that this is our own now get game board rect, more specific. 
it does take an edge wind and a pointer to a rectangle and it also returns success failure so it's a good replacement for that function okay now this is good the other thing we don't need is this code right we don't need this anymore because it's all being uh, done in t inside this function all right so it's now showing me red because the variables are gone so but we do have this inside our rectangle so rc dot left rc dot top rc dot right and rc dot bottom okay so now the red line should go okay so this is good so now let's just give it a try to make sure that we still get the same output same result Control F5, run it. Okay. Oops, I'm getting an error here because it's already running in the background. I've got to close it. Okay, compile again. All right, so see now it's the same as before. As you can maybe notice this there's a black border around the rectangle and the reason is that this rectangle function actually draws a you know like with a dark uh, with a black pen by default and that's how it gets the border there's another windows api called felrect and this guy is more convenient in the case of a rectangle because it takes a rectangle pointer here and the other advantage is that it can take a brush whereas rectangle always draws with the current brush so this you can specify your own brush which we're not going to get into right now but in a future video we can show how to do that get stock object white brush the stock windows brushes are limited there's only a few so there's not many colors but just want to show you the difference between the two comment this out this is this other api let's see how this one goes all right so it's pretty much the same except if you notice that this one doesn't draw a dark border around so in our case for now i think we should stick with rectangle for a minute until we draw the lines let's okay so now that we have a rectangle and we have a function the next thing we want to see is how do we uh, draw the vertical and horizontal lines uh, believe it or not windows api does not have a line uh, api that takes like x1 y1 x2 y2 that's not there there's actually two calls you have to make the first one is called move to ex you just give it a starting point which is let's say just for testing zero zero which is the top left corner of our rectangle area, uh, client area because we're drawing inside the client and it takes also a pointer let's ignore this for, uh, for to appoint this ignore this for now it's optional make it null so this is now moving the drawing pointer to a specific location and you just do next line to HDC and you give it the ending point which let's say 100 300 and let's see this in action and just uh, to make sure it's working all right so you can see the like I said this all darker gray area is the client area so it starts at the left top of 00, zero goes all the way down here to the client width and height of the client area but our line goes from 0, 0 to 100x, 300y. So now given this information, let's see how we can draw lines. Let's go back here. Before I do a lot of this, I'd prefer to have a, to create a shortcut for a line function. Let's go back up here and right below our uh, previous function, we can create another one called draw line and it takes hdc takes integer x1 integer y1 integer x2 integer y2 and i already uh, cut the code from below the one that we just wrote just to simplify my life here so we're just gonna say x1 y1 and then go to x2 
Why too? How convenient. I don't know why Microsoft did not introduce such a function. But anyways, it's easy to write ourselves. So here you go. So now we have this function. Let's go back to WM Paint and see how we can draw draw vertical lines and then we want to draw horizontal line, lines so we're going to use draw line we have the hdc and we have the rc right so we have we know the board has a lift and a top area and then we want to go from the if we're drawing vertical line so uh, how can i do this how can i draw this let me see okay so this is a vertical oh sorry just imagine this is a vertical line so this is the lift top and this is the bottom still is the same lift right so the only variation here is that the bottom is changing and then we want to draw another vertical line here so the offset between the two is going to be the cell, si the cell size constant we have. Then we draw another one here. And we draw maybe another one here. Right? That's how we draw it. Because remember, our game board actually is kind of like this. Something like this, right? We are going to draw one line, two, three, four and that's the vertical on the horizontal we're gonna do the same but let's let's stick to the vertical first or maybe yeah let's do that so like i said the only difference is going to be rc dot left plus cell size then rc dot bottom this is a vertical line something like this but however, I, we're not going to change this. I mean, we're not going to do this now. The lift is constant, but we want to have so, somehow make this inside the loop instead of trying to copy it multiple times. So let's do just the horizontal line. A horizontal line is going to be something like this. Oh my God, I'm really bad with drawing. Sorry about that. Lift, top goes all the way to right top so so basically lift and right and and the top is constant in this case so top is here top is here and then we have this to be right and then we will add a variable here that can move the both so given this let's say for integer i equals zero i is less than four plus plus i you want to loop to draw four lines okay how do we draw four lines that's easy we want like i said here to say plus i or more accurately plus cell size right times i on this one plus same here because the left is constant in this case the i will make it variable on the next iteration if you multiply by zero the first time then we start from the very edge left edge of the rectangle which is good the next iteration becomes with one cell size etc etc same thing we do here we said that the top is constant but what makes it variable what makes it move is the i so cell size times i and this is the cell size times i okay so now we have our lines completed let's give it a try Control f5 again to compile and run all right so we have a really nice board now so the only thing i can see here i don't know if it's visible on the video but there's a double line here and the double line here i think there's a a, like a one-off pixel between the two functions and the rectangle as a matter of fact at this point we want to get rid of this rectangle <clears throat> because it draws its own uh, uh, like line uh, borderline and we already do the same here let's just comment it out 
and do it this way. Let me show you what's going to happen now. It's going to be interesting. See, we're actually drawing the whole board like this, but we lose the white background. However, if we remove, you know, just bring this back. Remember, this one doesn't have a background, uh, a border, sorry. So it only has the background white. So if we combine the two together, then we have a nice white inside and the lines are taken care of. That code is taken care of the lines all over. And just to make it more fun, this is all uh, up to preference. If some people don't want to, you know, let me just comment this out. You don't like this uh, box box look some people might say like okay i'm gonna do from one to three right i'm just gonna do this let's see how that looks all right so now we have really like uh if this is how you want to draw your uh tic-tac-toe board then that's fine too it's it's really up to you i'm gonna give you the two options and this combine it with this uh, now it's probably not as visible as before because the white is covering more areas and if you want to combine white with and just not do these it's going to take more work but for me i'm going to go stick with this uh, square look and just call it good okay this is perfect for me so now that we're done with this i think uh, this video is uh, pretty much done and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Please leave a comment or share with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel or like us on Facebook. See you in the next video.